That's right, I'm actually getting a Halloween episode done in time for Halloween, which means the Christmas video is probably gonna come out in late February. Oh, look at that. I did that thing where I forgot to make an episode for an entire year. Sorry guys, after watching the film we're gonna be talking about today, I found religion and it just kind of distracted me. That's right, I am very happy to say that I am now a proud Wainwrightist. My name is Rupert Wainwright, Rupert Glynn Wainwright. The woman that I would wanna date is exactly 29 and three quarters forever. What, you don't know about the new auteur on the scene? Well, then maybe this requires a little bit of context. You see, I wasn't quite sure what to do this episode on until I remembered a very special film that lingered in the back of my memories of wandering through the aisles at Blockbuster. Remember them? Remember physical media? I totally don't continue to spend obscene amounts of money on things like that or anything. I remember seeing this DVD cover so much as a kid. Crucifixion imagery really stood out to me and creeped me out when I was younger, so this thing just really stuck with me. And I vividly remember the title, too, Stigmata. But that was mostly because of The Simpsons. How come you get a social worker? I'm the one with stigmata. But I was also aware that it was a movie, and then it faded away from my memory until just recently when I was in LA, you know, the land of sin and a big billboard that says homelessness kills. Uh, who's, who's that for? Oh, well, you know, I was considering living under the overpass, but now that you tell me that, no thank you, sir. Let's just say there was a chain of events that caused the word stigmata to enter the conversation, and it just came back like a, that, Oh, uh, a tumor? So that makes this a very special, spooky episode of Bad Movie Touch because I get to partake in something that I normally don't like to do, ragging on an idiot. You see, this film isn't the really interesting thing that we're going to be talking about today. Don't get me wrong, this is awful and we're gonna have a lot of fun here, but there is so much more this time. You see, I have a special insight into the mind of this film's creator and uh, ooh boy. Victor. Yes. How are you? Good, how are you referring? I'm glad I finally have some uh, male heterosexual Company. Too bad I'm gay. You are? Yeah. You look fabulous in that purple. You look just <laughs> great. Ah. Oh. He's so good, he's like a fine teammate of sewer water. I got so much to tell you guys, so let's just jump into it. Stigmata is a 1999 horror film directed by the meme-tastic shithead Rupert Wainwright. I want you not to talk too much and let her get her word in Edward. Rupert? I'm just being quiet. It's got Patricia Arquette and Gabriel Byrne and plenty of other people who are too good to have been in this movie. And this is one of those things that really does give you hope as a creator, because apparently this thing made a decent haul at the box office at the time it came out, despite being absolutely savaged by reviews. Roger Ebert even called it the funniest film about Catholicism from a theological point of view. If this thing can make money, then anything can make money. Follow your dreams. Let's get spooky. This is Bad Movie Touch. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, here we go. You guys ready for the big Halloween episode? No, oh, wait, today's Halloween. Shit, I always do this. But all in all, it's okay, because it's always the right time of year to make fun of Rupert Wainwright. We'll be watching Stigmata up here in my room because I didn't want to run the risk of putting this on any other screen in the house and risk somebody walking in on me watching this. Who are you? Right? Seriously, somebody walking in on you watching Stigmata is tantamount to them walking in on you watching, like, I don't know, videos of puppies exploding? I can't think of something that would be worse than this, honestly. So the movie starts off with the most obnoxious title effects. Uh, I'm really hoping the hyperactive feeling this gives me will become less annoying as the movie goes on. It doesn't. It doesn't. We start off with Gabriel Byrne going to Brazil because Death from the Seventh Seal passed away and someone got paint on their Mary statue or something. And then something spooky happens. Birds! Oh wait, I forgot, that's not the scary part. The scary part is the editor using this shot twice. I'm sure that won't happen again. It does. It does. Uh, then some guy yells at Gabriel Byrne and he uses a stud finder on the statue for some reason. Uh, what are you doing there? You looking to hang a painting? Art on top of art? It's interesting. Hey, anything to cover up the creepiness of churches. Seriously, churches creep me out. I don't know why. It's weird. He takes a bunch of pictures and everybody acts like they're living in Transylvania in a Universal Monster movie. Also, this is where you start to realize that the movie is kind of edited like Suicide Squad. Oh yay, epilepsy. I didn't know that before. Thanks, Rupert. Hey, may maybe I even have stigmata. Ah, uh, no, no. 
That'd be stupid. And then it's worse like the movie doesn't know how to get started. Some kid just steals the dead priest's rosary and runs over and gives it to Patricia Arquette's character's mom, who, by the way, we only ever see in these shots. I wouldn't even know that that's her mother if I didn't check on IMDb. Way to go, Rupert. Or I, I guess I can't really blame you for that, but why did you only ever show us her in these two, like, these, these faraway shots with stuff obscuring her face? What the hell? And like the guy yells at the kid, but he doesn't do anything to stop her from just, you know, taking it. And Gabriel Byrne looks concerned, and then it just becomes that scene from It Follows. What a riveting way to start a film. Oh look, the title has a cross in it. That's fitting because watching this movie feels exactly like being crucified. I hope you're ready for some 1999 Edge music because there's no breaks. We go straight from like Latin murmuring into 311. No good to be! What? That's not 311? What are you talking about? Every band that makes music like this is 311, even if the lead singer is clearly a woman. No virgin me, for I have sinned, but sex and gin, go Thank you. Oh god, I, I, I have a theory on how this movie got started. I feel like they were just making one of those anti-piracy ads that you would always see in front of DVDs, and then they just got carried away from there. They had to make up the story on the spot. You wouldn't download a bear. These opening credits are so weird. This music is just pounding, and it sounds like somebody is yelling at you on the bus, and they keep piping in little audio snippets of stuff that's important to the plot. <laughs> And it just makes everything sound like a clusterfuck. The entire time Patricia Arquette's character is walking around, she's wearing a top that says porn star and like a furry coat. I can guarantee you that Rupert picked out every element of this outfit. Oh, she looks fabulous. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Oh yeah, just more crosses and shit. Just throw that in there. What's going on? Why are we at a rave? Why is the music by Billy Corgan? What's Waterman doing here? Uh, I hate everything about this. I love a great title sequence, but when they're done poorly, they just feel like they go on forever. And I've never seen something so horribly edited try to actually deliver plot info. Like, this isn't just filler to start the movie. They, they're actually trying to set up plot information here. Patricia Arquette's character gets the rosary in the mail and then goes on to have some of the most unerotic sex I've ever seen with some rando from the bar who, who never shows up again, by the way. Why are you doing this? Oh, and look at that. Rupert's name shows up right when the lyrics are talking about being disgraceful. Poetic justice, I suppose, but it would be more fitting if the lyrics were talking about being a total fucking dumbass. You know what? I'll tell you a little secret. I trained with the British Olympic pentathlon squad. That's nice. Then the movie actually manages to slow the fuck down for a few moments, probably because Rupert wanted to savor the time he had a naked Patricia Arquette in the bed. Oh, that's not even a joke. That's probably why. Uh, then her phone rings and, and what? And then what the fuck? No, what? Uh, oh, we're just not gonna address that? Okay, fine, whatever. Let's just get it over with. Look, I got my mom on the other line long distance. We'll see you tonight. Uh-huh. Bye. I didn't even know you were there. I, I took a little side trip. Nobody is reacting to anything. It's very annoying. Going on that cruise, I'm not gonna talk to you for a month, and I have to run. Okay, have fun. I love you. I love I'm you glad too, you called, Mom. This is what my anxiety tells me every phone call is going to be like. I'm glad you called, Mom. Bye-bye. And that's the most realistic bit so far. Okay, cool, fine, bye. God, Grandma, I know you don't have the money for an ambulance, but I can't just drop what I'm doing and come get you. Like, I have, I have chili to eat. You already know how this goes. She gets a curse thing because her mom sucks or whatever. It makes her sick. I feel like she just has no point of reference for Christianity and her mom was like, oh, now might be the time to introduce her all this, right, old age of 30 and all. That would be kind of weird if you had no idea about Christianity and you suddenly just get this tiny little thing with a bloody man on it. Join our side, join our group. We, we get the bloody little man. Come join us every Sunday. We get, we, we get, you can get tons more bloody little man. We got a big bloody man on the wall. You, you can see him if you want. And then we meet her friend who probably has a name, but God help me, I will not look it up. Rupert probably didn't know the character's names. Why should I? And then it becomes clear that the way they talk on the phone is how they're just gonna talk throughout the entire movie? Hey, it's not traumatic. What if I'm having a baby? Oh, oh no, what if I'm being a person in this world? As soon as she says her thing, you say your thing, and then and then we'll just keep doing this. Come on, I've got women to bore to tears. I mean, I have to say, I don't know many Ukrainian filmmakers. But I love Russian filmmakers. I mean, I love Tarkovsky. Mm -hmm. It's like this scene isn't even supposed to end here. She's just in the middle of saying something and then it hard cuts to the Vatican. Do you see why it's so hard to talk about this movie? Every five seconds there's something that makes you go, what, why? But why did that happen? 
Let me see anybody cuss. You know how it is. Prostitutes just hanging out outside the cafe as they do. Grope in the local holy man as they are also one to do. Totally wasn't just a reason to get more weird sex shit in this movie for no purpose. And everyone just starts talking too. Like, no scene in this movie can be quiet. It's just constantly Gabriel Byrne goes to see Mr. Dark. Through other men's lives. Dreaming. Only other men's dreams. That's in a Disney movie, everybody. Why isn't that on Disney Plus and Candle Shoe is? What the fuck is Candle Shoe? Anyway, Gabriel Byrne tells him that he took pictures of the statue and that the tears show up as white because they're warm, and apparently there's no scientific explanation. And there is no scientific explanation. Oh, oh, you sure about that? You, you did lots of tests and got the results back? What's even worse is they do that whole thing where it's like, hey, person who we hired to do this job and whose job it is to do these things, we don't believe you. You're crazy. He even starts acting like an abusive boyfriend at one point. It's kind of weird. I think that this is different. I'm not going to allow you to go back to Brazil. They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Or maybe he's just trying to prevent the movie from happening. Actually, bless him, he is a saint. Brother Dario, get me all the information you can on this church in Belo Quinto, would you? Oh, Father Dario, you say? Like, Dario Argento? Oh, you sly dog, you. You just snuck it right in there. You know, the only character whose name I even know so far. You just snuck it right in. There's another thing that I love when it's done appropriately, and it just kind of blends in there. But when it sticks out, God, I hate it. I hate it so much. So he puts his AirPods in and leaves, and then they start talking about him like they're writing a book report on the movie that they're currently in? Andrew's problem is he can't decide if he's a scientist or a priest. Anyway, that's getting a little too boring for Rupert. Let's cut back to something a little more sexy and preferably 29 and 3 quarters forever. <laughs> I swear, I wrote that joke before moving on to the next scene. I, ju I just kind of assumed that Patricia Arquette would be in some state of undress, and, and I was right. I'm doing great at Rupert Bingo, guys. Do you ever do this? Do you ever just eat an apple in the tub with just your soapy hands and get Mr. Bubble in there with that fresh fruit and just enhance the flavor like that? Yeah, I still use Mr. Bubble. Sh shut up. I'm not on trial here. There's no reason for this to be in the tub. Everything else just moves at like 10x speed, and then any shot of nudity is like, uh... Let's just hang out here for, for, for a little bit. I don't even know why Rupert's so into her. She was already 30 by the time they shot this movie. For Rupert, once you hit the big 3-0, it becomes like that episode of Scrubs where JD can't see married women. Thank you. Dr. Feinberg? Anastasia? Gift shop girl. Oh no, they let Neil Breen edit the movie. Me and Steve reviewed that, but it was on a hard drive that failed. Maybe we'll see that one day. D who knows? Oh shit, bird! Stop, stop with the birds. It's not scary. Oh wait, what's that? You put it in slow motion? Oh, I changed my mind. That's horrifying. I don't know why I said that like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody reacts to Persona in their own special way. If you understood that joke, congratulations. You've inherited my film school debt. Uh, Billy, can I call you Billy? Or per perhaps I should call you the a vampire. vampire. What the fuck is this music? This sounds like the dub from earlier is rolling around on the keyboard while somebody's trying to shoot it. So she starts to get the stigmata, which is when your hands bleed like the wounds of Christ, typically because you're lying. Why is it happening like this in the tub and all? I don't know. Must have been in that part of the Bible I didn't read, so all of it. Nurse, somebody needs to tell me what's going on! Yeah, yeah, could they, could they do that for me too, actually? Yeah, I'm pretty alone. It's nice that the movie's acknowledging it, though. Why won't it stop? Hello, Rupert. It's been some time. I just want you to know that it's my turn to laugh. I want to laugh too. Is this part of the movie? N no. Okay, bye. Wait! Oh no. Someone just told her that she has to be in Stigmata. Poor soul. Who are you? I'm Dr. Redstein. Do you know what your name is? Do you? I don't. Rupert doesn't. Uh, do you have one? 
What happened? Where am I? Hmm. Guess not. This whole bit is hilarious. Anne Cusack has the calmest reaction to the most horrific shit I have ever seen. Oh, Jesus. Can I get some more help over here? We need some four by four. We have a very deep laceration here. No, we got a very deep laceration here. Yes, we do. I'll take care of that right quick, right after I finish this episode of MASH. Wow, when you look at that, it only bleeds when I touch it. Well then... Stop it, get some help. Her response is a little weird too. Maybe you should not touch it. It's just a little bit wrong, right? Have a nice day, and also you having one. Do you have any trouble with a significant other? Yes. And that is? I'm not very significant. make fun of the writing that thinks it's so much cleverer than it actually is, but so many movies were like this back then. What's interesting about watching this one is it constantly reacts to how terrible it is. Look, how long is this gonna take? I wanna go home. I don't even have to do anything. They think she did this to herself, but that would never happen because... I love being me. Oh, you know, that's why people harm themselves. Because they hate being her. Ask anyone. What does that even mean? Oh yeah, well just call up everybody you know and make sure you don't want to die. Y you're telling the truth. Why do you sound like you're the worst liar on the planet? Other than of course the, the father, father of lies. lies, Rupert Wainwright. A woman who is interested in my net worth before we go on a first date is a bit like me asking her for naked photographs. Unless she wants to show me naked pictures of her, in which case I'll gladly have my accountant send over a complete portfolio of my net worth. So I guess they just let her go and oh my god, we get it. It's very cool. Look, I can do that effect too. Hello, Patty. See? And this next scene is so weird. It's like the flower shop scene from the room, honestly. Buonasera, signor. Buonasera. Let's have a Monica. Si deve filmare. No, tutti devono filmare cose. It'll be eighteen dollars. Go, keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. So Gabriel Byrne and the Joker cigarette dealer talk about who Gabriel Byrne is some more, except it's the same stuff he already told us. He goes around investigating stuff for the church. This is, all these scenes read like they're written by a toddler. I travel around the world investigating miracles. And then I disprove them. The real miracle is anybody believes anything. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, this is the investigator. Uh, he investigates investigations for the investigative branch of the investigators. In many ways, it's hard to be a scientist's wife, the wife of a scientist. True. None of us know what we are doing. No, oh, I know, Rupert. I can tell that's you under there. You really slimmed down from your normal potato shape for this role. Nothing else of interest happens in that scene. Moving on to rain and porn music? Where do we play this in the Oh my god, just make porn, Rupert. You're clearly not too good for it. Just save us all the trouble. Uh, uh, you know what, one second. I don't know many Ukrainian filmmakers, but I love Russian filmmakers. I mean, I love Tarkovsky. Mm -hmm. You know, there's two versions of the Andrei Rubilov. No, I didn't know. Yeah, that. there's the four-hour version, mm -hmm. and then there's the long version. Oh. And that's sorry, I'm like, Patty yeah. told me not to talk too much. Yeah. So where are you from, Kiara? I'm actually from Vancouver. Canada. Vancouver? Yeah. Ah, I spent a lot of time in Vancouver. Commonwealth. One of my favorite cameramen in the world walks with like a incredibly wobbly knee. Well, he was I'm done with dealing with Rupert's bullshit. Somebody else can finish it. Oh yeah, my time to shine. <laughs> Oh well, whatever. Flannel, you take care of it. You know what? Uh, well, you know, I'll probably have to address that body downstairs at some point, but until then, let's return to Rupert Land. So Patricia Arquette goes to the salon where she works. Oh yeah, she 
cuts hair. I don't remember if I mentioned it, it does not matter at all. The next few minutes of this movie could be described with one word, crossfades. So many crossfades, oh my god with the crossfades, please stop, I'm begging you, just use anything else, use a star wipe for Christ's sake, oh my god. And then the movie becomes hysterical. No, no, I'm serious, this, this one scene here is worth the price of admission alone. That being said, you should sooner put your money in a blender that's on fire than pay to see this movie. Like, isn't that great? That's fantastic stuff. Great job, Rupert. This is much better than Blank Check by a country mile. True Kino. There's no baby and there's no flame. It's happening. There's no baby and there's no flame. There's no baby and there's no flame. No baby, no baby. No flame. And then that scene doesn't really end. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, none of the scenes really seem to. They, they just walk away, and her friend doesn't believe that she saw a lady outside in public. You know, maybe the movie's edited like this because the editor got all the footage, realized the movie didn't make any fucking sense, and then he just tried to keep things moving along so he wouldn't think about it so much. He, you know, he's a true trooper. And then the movie kind of tricks you into thinking that it'll have maybe, you know, just at least one really decent or creative scare, but nope, that's way too interesting. Just walk up to him and act like a weirdo. Hey you! Are you speaking to me? Are you Andrew Kiernan? <laughs> like, were these two even on the same set? Oh shit, a cross! You gotta give me some warning. You can't just, you just blomp it on me like that. Did the guy who did the sound mixing for this movie also do the sound mixing for it? Because <laughs> that would make a lot of sense. Are you Andrew Kiernan? So then she starts acting like a lunatic, and it's really funny. No one can help me now, I'm fucked. <laughs> this causes the train to go absolutely nuts. Oh god, I think she's about to become Shazam. Oops, it, it, guess, guess not. Subtlety, thy name is Rupert Wainwright. Why is this happening? Why are you like this? So the train stops, but you know, her back's all whipped up now, and then the scene just fades out, right on cue. It's like they stopped rolling right on cut and did no more takes. The next few minutes of the movie are just Patricia Arquette getting blood work while Gabriel Byrne gives out some communion wine, and they, they do this neat little thing where every time Gabriel Byrne says, this is the blood of Christ, they cut back to her blood work, you, you know? It's, it's, it's really neat, and they do it every time. It's the blood of Christ. This is the blood of Christ. It totally doesn't wear out its welcome immediately. It totally isn't stupid and cheesy. It totally doesn't make me want to jump into the Hudson River. You think she has epilepsy? Because, you know, that makes sense. Hey, I developed epilepsy at the start of the episode, and I'm still not seeing any- oh god. And they let her go, because they just keep doing this, but we wouldn't have a movie otherwise. Oh yeah, and then that priest from the subway shows back up. Why? Do you know what the stigmata are? Hey, that's the name of the show. Gabriel Byrne gets told that he has a new assignment, and that the church where he was at the start of the movie isn't being investigated anymore, or doesn't exist anymore. I don't know, and neither will you. He has to go look at Patricia Arquette and figure out what's going on there. You know the drill. Hey, Frankie! Hey Frankie! Hey Frankie! Hey Frankie! <laughs> it's like they knew nobody was gonna remember her name, so they were like, ah oh, shit, just th throw them all saying it into one scene, that that'll fix it. Anyway, the whole point of this scene is to introduce her to Gabriel Byrne. Whispering like this was a goddamn church? <laughs> oh, look at that. That's what I do when I say you too after the waiter says enjoy your food. <laughs> Would you like a haircut, a manicure, or maybe you'd like to have your nipples pierced? You know, that's that's the most appropriate reaction in this situation. I, I, I'm i sorry, I can do what here? You, you can do what to me? Are you qualified to do that? Are you sure? Claudia's University of Cosmetology. See, I'm accredited. Oh, cool. Am I going crazy or is Frankie hitting on a priest? 
I mean, she's definitely talking to a priest, but by that merit, I was flirting with the person who handed me a burger through a drive through window an hour ago. That was a really weird CBS now that I think about it. What do I call you? I feel kind of weird calling a guy I could date father. Now see, that's almost flirting. You see, I think her friends read the script and just got a little too excited, said things a little too fast. So our two main characters meet. She realizes he was the guy that she was shouting for on the train. Are you Andrew Kiernan? And then they go to a diner and discuss stigmata and he's like, do you go to church? And she's like, nope. He mentions that people affected by stigmata are liars. I mean, uh, deeply religious. And so she can't be experiencing stigmata because she is not. This gets her really upset and she decides she has to go walk in the rain some more. Because it's always fucking raining in Pittsburgh, I guess. In a shitty horror movie? Oh, it's okay. I see that every week. She reads up on epilepsy and having a broken brain? And then you get this wonderful cut. Oh yeah, cut back to 90s edge. Was this, what is this? Was this a real club? Was this ever a thing where people just like, hey, yeah, let's all go down to the abandoned fence factory and watch Tommy spit fire. Literal fire. If it isn't God that's doing this to me, then who is? He's like a, he's like a fat Gordon Ramsay. I swear, like literally every attempt at horror shock in this thing just comes off as pure hilarity. I really don't think Rupert was trying to make a horror movie. I think he was just going with what he knew from Blank Check. And the editing is so bad here too. Like she runs toward this one girl, but then they immediately cut to a shot of her just standing there like nothing happened. You can tell this is just some completely unrelated shot. Oh yeah, and then we see this guy react to how bad the movie is. <laughs> so her face starts bleeding and she starts running around in traffic for like 14 fucking hours. Oh look, she might finally stop this shit. Oh no, come on. Oh look, director cameo. You know, Rupert was just waiting to burst. It's amazing he held off this long after the bath scene. Anyway, this whole scene is obnoxious. It's just a bunch of Dutch angles, edgy music, and even more epilepsy. Thanks. You know, this is actually how I avoid people who try to hand you those tour maps when you're walking through Times Square. Surprisingly effective. Take a guess how this scene's gonna end. Did you guess that it's going to abruptly fade to black? Well then you're wrong, cause this is like the one time they do it well after where they should've. Uh, keeping things fresh, you know? Gabriel Byrne takes her to a church and listens to a recording he made of her. And if you've seen a horror movie before, then then you know how this goes. He calls up the other priest and he's like, oh, what does this say? And the other one's like, oh, it says something spooky. I wrote that before I even checked if I was right. And then I played it through and I, and I just was. I don't normally write my reviews like this, but this one is just so easy. I feel like this thing was created by hitting a button in Microsoft Word that said create horror movie. It's just every possible cliche. The scientists have discovered that in Roman times people were crucified through the wrists, not the palms. No, wait, you're telling me that every painting, every statue of Christ, every single crucifix in the whole world is wrong? What? No. No, this can't be. You're telling me that every single depiction of Jesus is wrong? Say it isn't so. Oh God, next you're gonna start telling me that he wasn't a white guy. Oh yeah, and then they find out she's speaking Aramaic and she falls off her roof and dies. And it's a really touching ending. Did she get through? No. She didn't even care. She just wanted people to see that she called. Y you go, whichever one of these people you are. They've been trying to reach her, but they can't because she's busy, all work, and no play makes Patricia a dull girl in her apartment. Who are you? Il messaggero no è importante. They really thought this was gonna make people freak out. I mean, they're right, I'm freaking out right now. Look at her stupid slippers. Uh, so the movie just kind of becomes The Exorcist for a little bit. Okay, so I guess it was always aping off that, but now it's really becoming noticeable. Who wrote that? You did. And hey, what do you know? That's my reaction to every single Facebook memory that gets jammed in my face. Who wrote that? You did. Oh, great, more scenes at the Vatican with that one guy who sounds like an extra from Howling 2. These are newspaper clippings from our office in New York. This woman was hit by a car. Blah, 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 church cover up or something. Back to David Byrne. This is not my beautiful house. I, I mean, Gabriel Byrne, whatever. <sighs> can you please? He's a dick in this movie. Oh, hey, can you take a look at this? Get the fuck out of the way! I can't see! There are cars there, motherfucker! 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm being possessed by the spirit of Rupert and it's compelling me to do evil. Oh, not this shit again. I know your secrets, Rupert. I'm not Rupert. What? I'm not Rupert. Do I look like a piece of shit? Wow. Shut up. She yells at him and runs away. This line occurs. Hey, what kind of a scientist is a priest anyway? Just sounds like a weird setup for a joke, honestly. They talk about Gabriel Byrne's faith or whatever and how cheesecake is a living thing. Living things like lilac and, 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 and hedgehogs and Beer. snails and... Cheesecake. Beer and cheesecake. Mmm, I love the way it screams when I bite it. If I wasn't poor as shit, I would've actually bought some cheesecake for that bit. Or at least I would've justified it as just being for that bit, and then I would've eaten an entire cheesecake by myself. And then they talk about sex, because it wouldn't be a Rupert Wainwright movie without sex talk every five minutes. And I guess they realize how bad the writing is, because it just starts to get drowned out by stock music. A set of complications for another... Irritating for sure, but more pleasant overall. You, you guys remember that movie that came out like a few years ago, The Snowman, where it, like the movie just felt unfinished and then it came out that the movie literally was unfinished. Like they, they didn't shoot 15% of the footage that they had to get, like to get the whole thing done. That's how I feel when I watch this. These edits are so fucking funny to me and I don't know why. They talk about Stigmata some more and they come to the conclusion that she's dying because nobody has ever received all five wounds of Christ. Also, they talk about how her personal demons can now like attack her or something. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know what. So the old priest tells him to leave and then just starts freaking out like Gabriel Byrne sent him lewd pictures of children or something. Uh, oh, oh wait, this is the Catholic Church. He freaks out like he starts sending him a picture of two guys kissing, I guess. He gets all weird and leaves because the other priest is giving him the stink eye, and then they realize that Bernie Sanders has been in the room with them this whole time. Who is it? Old priest calls up this guy, whose name I don't feel like looking up, so for all intents and purposes, he's Jeff Bridges now. He tells him he's found the lost gospel, and he immediately hangs up. Patricia Arquette keeps trying to mount Gabriel Byrne, but he's just mad that she painted the wall. <laughs> you think that's bad? You should see what Doug Walker did to it. She starts beating the shit out of him, probably because he wouldn't stop taking pictures of her. Honestly, this whole part is amazing. She's just going absolutely haywire now. She's stabbing herself and floating. They don't even care about ripping off the exorcist anymore. They're just like, yeah, look at it. Fuck you. You, you just wouldn't understand. This is a true Rupert Wainwright film. You just, you can't understand all the literal complexities of the, of the four hour cut of the Andre Rubinoff. There's the four hour version, mm -hmm. and then there's the four hour version, mm -hmm. and then there's the long version, and there's the four hour version. Mm -hmm. Patty told me not to talk too much. There's the four hour version. So Patricia Arquette starts bleeding everywhere and floating like she's being crucified. But, but, but I swear, the only thing I could focus on for this entire scene is, is the fact that they, it sounds like they like got two different scores for the scene and then they they listen to him and they're like hey, hell let's just use both of them and they just layer them on top of each other they sound totally different and it makes the whole scene hurt to watch like dude how did you make the decision to make stigmata come on no, really, Rupert, that's a valid question. Like, were you, were you on Quaaludes? They hug it out and lay in bed, and then the priests come to assassinate Gabriel Byrne or whatever the hell is going on in their storyline. What language is it in? It's Aramaic. How do you know that? That's completely irrelevant. Is it, though? Because, like, I can't just tell somebody that a sign's written in Lithuanian based on blind faith and my minimal knowledge of what the Lithuanian language looks like. <gasps> Gabriel Byrne wants to help Patricia Arquette, but Mr. Dark says no! He should have used a stick to him. I told him, did he listen? Hey, that's for a jury to decide. My other son, Mike, got shot in the face. He tells him he's being reassigned. There's only like 20 minutes left in the movie, so honestly, I'm just happy this isn't gonna go anywhere. He talks to the church with the most interesting man in the world. He tells him that the church is inside him. The kingdom of God is inside you. Gross. I guess this means that somebody is using Patricia Arquette to deliver a new gospel and the church doesn't want people to find out about it. 
or no time to think of a reason for the movie to be feature length, just make it that way. You see, like, the movie makes a few efforts to distinguish itself from the likes of The Exorcist by being like, oh, oh no, you see, it's not just a movie about, like, an exorcism type deal, it's actually a movie about a church cover up. But honestly, they focus on this so little that it still feels completely thrown in there, and all you can focus on is, hey, why is this church cover up movie getting in the middle of my Exorcist movie? Honestly, the alternative choice for this episode was The Exorcist 2, which is just as funny. I'll get to it one day, don't worry. I am so so. You start trying to give her an exorcism because you know you you didn't see that coming. And then we get to see Rupert's reaction to being told that everybody wanted to keep their clothes on during the shooting of the movie. Stop! Get away from me! He starts trying to choke her, but then Gabriel Byrne comes in and saves the day. Get away from her! Get away from her! Get away! I know what's happening. Get away from her! No, you get away from her. 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 What the fuck am I doing with my hands? Everything starts catching on fire and Gabriel Byrne has to be the dead priest like new messenger so he'll leave Patricia Arquette alone and I guess he proves his worst somehow. I don't... I just... I don't care. Let me be your messenger. No, of course, everything ends up okay for them. They even get to bone on a park bench, hooray. And then Gabriel Byrne goes back to the church from the start of the movie to get the scroll that contains the lost gospel and everything's right with the world. Wait, wait a minute. Were they only so protective of this scroll because it basically just said, fuck going to church? Since when does the Catholic Church care about PR? The whole thing seems made up, right? But no, because the movie ends with this little text crawl that says that this scroll is a real thing and that the Catholic Church refuses to acknowledge it. Like, Look at that, the movie wants to pretend it was about something, but no, 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 no. It's too late. I see through your lies, Rupert. I know this was just an excuse to film a lady in a bathtub. So I know you're probably all still thinking, Andy, why did you choose this movie? Who is Rupert Wainwright and why do you care so much? And while I don't have an answer for the latter part, let me elaborate a little bit on the legendary director behind this film just a little bit more. Rupert Wainwright was born inside of an active volcano and lives exclusively off Red Bull and hatred. Oh, God damn it. Wait, wait, I have valuable information on Rupert Wainwright. Like what? Rupert Wainwright is one of the most interesting men in the world. A cross between Ricky Gervais and an old broom, he's the director of such classics as Stigmata, The Fog, Blank Check, and the music video for You Can't Touch This by MC Hammer. Not a joke. Not a joke at all. He did that. He was also on an episode of Millionaire Matchmaker that's one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever seen. Hello, Patty. Hi, Rupert Wainwright. It's between Petra and Olya. Well, Olya was the first girl I met. <laughs> it's true that my last two girlfriends were very tall, had long blonde hair, were on the slimmer side. Hello. Till muscle failure. Yes. That sounds so f Russian. <laughs> I'm from Kiev, Ukraine. Can yes. you? You know, I mean, I have to say, I don't know many Ukrainian filmmakers, but I love Russian filmmakers. I mean, I love Tarkovsky. Hello. Uh. You don't like be you love. Huh? You don't like be you love. Eh, eh, eh. Ravishing. Do you want to take the flowers you get out? Are you okay? I'm fine. I've done this before. <laughs> Hello. I definitely kind of feel bad. I once had a dentist doing a root canal on me who pitched me a script. Coming through, Olya? You're slowing down the factory, oh. baby. Come on. The best thing to do is ask her, but she certainly gives the impression that she's enjoying it. I kind of feel bad that these people don't even have a food on the table. She's enjoying it. I kind of feel bad. She's enjoying it. You're slowing down the factory, oh. baby. Come on. Hello. Oh, so that's what I keep using these clips from. Yeah, and I'm sure that's been wonderful for everyone with no context. So, most people? Yeah. Wow, wow, you know, that, that actually is really interesting. Is there anything else that's interesting about Rupert Wainwright? He's a misogynistic dickhead who regularly does business with Azerbaijan because they're the only country with views backwards enough to match his own ignorance. Uh, oh. You know, that's not the... It's not the fun... Kind of dirt, really? Oh, there's also a video of a Russian man threatening to kill him that we keep parodying. Wait, what? Hello, everybody. 
Hello, American friend, Rupert Wainwright. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. You're saying that he's one of those typical egomaniac L.A. Cretans who has way too much confidence for a man whose main claim to fame is making a movie about a bunch of kids buying Robert Rodriguez's castle. That's who owns that. Isn't that weird? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, neat. Hey, while I have you here, what did you think of Stigmata? Did not have time to watch Stigmata. That's probably for the best. Hey, uh, anyway, thanks for stopping by. It's usually just me in a different jacket. What? Bye forever now. So that's Stigmata, a wild ride into the psyche of a hilarious man. I don't Listen know to me fine. So it was great seeing you. Enchanté. That, that, that means hello. Like, isn't that just hilarious? He doesn't know that that means hello. See, R Rupert should have been the Joker, I'm telling you. Murray, one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as... Ruben Glynn Wainwright. I don't normally like to rag on directors too much because I don't typically think it's relevant. One thing I really want to emphasize with this show is that bad movies are fun and watching them is typically pretty fun. As a director who's made a bad movie, I understand. I never want this show to come across like I'm attacking one specific person for the art that currently carries their name. I understand that filmmaking is a collaborative process and it's incredibly rare to find something that completely fails because of one single entity. Hell, even this isn't one of those cases. Yeah, I'm not going to say Rupert exactly did the best job, but it's clear he wasn't working with a great script and the edit's pretty terrible too. That being said, you just see way too many people like Rupert thriving out there and it's honestly really disheartening. Like the dude even has another movie in production. I know very talented indie filmmakers who can't find any kind of funding for the stuff they want to do, but people are just willing to throw money at Rupert Wainwright. If this video lets at least one more person know how much of a scab this guy is, then I've done my civic duty. That being said, do not find ways to go out and harass this man. Just sort of let the job market do its thing and show him that nobody wants more Rupert Wainwright. Especially the women who have to go on dates with him. Hmm. Hopefully Gabriel Byrne and Patricia Arquette are extending that same treatment. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Go out and make a movie. It cannot be worse than this. Wow, thanks for watching everybody. Really great to be back to making episodes for you guys. This episode was a lot of fun to put together and I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And I know it's been a little while since I posted my last episode, but I, I explained a little bit in my last video. I was in LA and also uh, I'm getting prepped for jaw surgery that I'm gonna have to have uh, relatively soon. So, you know, I didn't have a lot of time to create episodes. So I wanted to make sure that when I did put out another one, it was of decent quality. So I hope that this lived up to that. But I genuinely love making this stuff. I love creating this content for you guys. And it means so much to me that people enjoy it and want to see more and that you know people are actually suggesting future episodes which I will get to uh, by the way and I'm glad you like the show and I want to make sure that going forward I still have the love for the show as well and I still am putting my all into it so yeah all that just to explain why I haven't made a video in a while and, and of course this was originally going to be a Halloween episode but you know it was I, I was doing stuff. Oh yeah, also I shot an episode with Steve that uh, was on a hard drive that failed, and, and I think that also really bummed me out for a while. I'm glad I waited to do this episode until I found something really interesting with a lot of tangential information to go behind it. On top of that, my movie is finally almost done. I know, I've been talking about it for so long now. Yeah, I, I don't know how that's gonna work with distribution and getting it all out there and stuff, but rest assured that, you know, you, you can see that relatively soon. And now that I've got all that little update stuff out of the way, if you like this video, thank you so much. Uh, why don't you leave a like on it down below? That really helps me out. Maybe leave a comment down below with a suggestion for a future episode. Love getting comments from you guys. It's great to hear your feedback and it really does mean a lot to me that there's that kind of communication there. If you like this and you want to see more, maybe just see some of the other videos I'm working on, be sure to subscribe and I, I, I don't know if the bell is still a thing. Like, do you still have to click a bell? But yeah, there might be a little bell icon that you can click to actually get notified when, when videos are up. If you really like my stuff, you could go support me over on Patreon. I'll leave the link for that down below. And uh, you could get your name on this end screen here. And like these lovely people who keep me doing what I love to do. I really can't state in words how much it means to me to have the support of wonderful people like you. Also leave my social media info in this end card and, and down below. You could go uh, check that out if you want. I'll also leave that for my movie as well. If you want to, you know, stay updated on releases and screenings and all that stuff as we move further along. So uh, yeah, you can check all that out if you want. And that's pretty much all I got to say. Thank you so much for checking this out. I hope you had a good time and I hope I'll see you in the next episode of Bad Movie Touch. See you soon.